Hi, I'm Mark DeWald. I'm also an engineer. I was watching C-SPAN the other night, and they had a panel with um, T. Boone Pickens and uh, Ted Turner, and they were talking about the, these subjects. One of the things I've seen is that they rate solar energy as being expensive per megawatt or per megawatt hour, but it seems to me like what they're talking about is the upfront cost, and they're not considering the fact that it pays for itself in the long run, that a, a system for, a, for an average size house may cost 10000 or $20,000, but that pays itself back because you're not paying utility bills all that time for another 30 years. And so you, you're actually saving more money by not paying utility bills in the long run. And that would apply to businesses as well. Um, so I'm wondering if they're showing the correct numbers uh, or if they're, how their math is. Thank you so much. I'm gonna start that since, since Ghazi talked about policy being an issue. Ghazi, you've got the ball. <laughs> don't, don't get me started. <clears throat> I always say, um, I always say, economists and statisticians could give you any answer you want. Okay, so I could sit here and argue with you um, that uh, solar is uh, economical in seven years. I could sit here and, and uh, wind is economical in three years. Uh, but they are going to say what they want to say because you could do it. You could, you could whatever your base that you measure your statistics or your economics on, you can get the results off. We have to do a better job of educating people. We really have to do that because as far as I'm concerned, solar energy and wind power is already economical if you take it on the life cycle of the, uh, of the system, even before it expires. You know, I mean, uh, why is the utilities, <laughs> I, I would leave it to you to say, uh, buy a 20-year contract of produced energy by a windmill or a solar uh, system because they know over the 20 years they're going to be able to get the, what they paid for which is a little higher than today's prices so i am i am with you and all all of us here believers that politics is really playing um, a, a big game in this um, but i i just want to say one, one thing because i i always lecture on energy and sources of energy um, you know, you know, you have to use, and, and the panels have mentioned that, whatever energy is available to you at the, at the, at the place that you, you have, and think of the future. Is it, I mean, I like your example of a saving account. Is it going to be there in the long run? So that determines also some of the cost, the replacement of that system. i give you one example and I'll, I'll stop. I was in Africa one, one time, and uh, we were visiting a farmer who, you, who, who was uh, pumping water to, to irrigate his, his uh, crop. So he's showing us around, and he has a diesel generator that is, that's pumping. Then he has another diesel generator sitting next to it. And then he has a third diesel generator sitting, sitting in the shed. And I said, how come you have three diesel generators? He said, because... One is working, one is a replacement for the one that's working, and the third one is spare parts for the two of them. <laughs> now, you don't have that in, in photovoltaics or in wind. You have a system that's reliable, that is engineered well, and all this stuff. And the cost now is different when you look at all these externalities. In the old days, they used to the word the externalities, which is the added cost to the cost of the system. I'll let somebody else. Thank you. So I'm going to ask. Al and the rest of the panel members to address this issue and the closing thoughts. We've got about five to seven minutes, please. Al, any closing thoughts or address to this issue? Uh, I pretty much agree with Ghazi. You know, you can basically make the numbers say whatever you want. You know, the thing about that is, is you want to make sure you get the true costs in there when you're going to do a comparison. And it, it, maybe some of those costs were left out. I, I don't know. I, um, you know, I think one thing is clear, and I think we'll all agree, is yeah, there, there's going to be a tremendous future here in renewables. Um, wind, solar, 
uh, across the board, uh, there's going to be a lot of new jobs, new opportunities coming up, and I think you guys made the right decision coming here uh, to start your careers. Um, and the sky's the limit. You can go pretty much anywhere you want to once you have an education. I'm a firm believer in that. Um, I guess that's about all I have to say. I, I'm, I'm not a person of a lot of words, I guess you can say that, so I'll just turn it over. Thank you so much. Janelle. Um, sure. I, I think uh, I would just echo the, um, the sentiment you see on our recycling bin sometimes. What is it? It's uh, think globally, act locally. Um, you all are, are gaining a skill set or will be gaining a skill set that will enable you to make a real impact on your individual communities. And when you hear various debates, um, try to educate yourselves on the policy issues that are behind it, on the political issues that are behind it. It's going to make you better at whatever it is that you are doing because it helps you define the issue. And so when I hear, and the, the last speaker had a question, and I, I don't have the answer to your question, but I can ask you, I can poke holes in it, and I can ask you, what type of solar? Where is the solar? Right? Because the cool thing about solar is that it can be rooftop, it can be solar thermal, which is enormous, um, or it can be on, on hundreds of acres of land. And, and when you talk about an issue, try to understand it to its fullest depth. And I think that, you know, working here and learning here is really going to give you that opportunity. And I urge you to take classes outside of perhaps your, your core competency, learn about other aspects of what you're going to be doing. It's going to make you better whatever it is you try to do. Thank you so much. Craig. Agree with that. Um, just answer to the question specifically is location, 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 right? It's the old real estate quote, but it's, it's very true. There are going to be some instances where, in fact, solar today, uh, even with what is a, I would say, is a first-generation technology that's being deployed for solar uh, collection, uh, is less expensive than oil or gas or, or coal-fired generation. Okay, and as uh, the government wises up, and hopefully it will, uh, wise up, and they actually put in place long-term policies that help to establish an industry instead of uh, simply facilitating projects getting built. They will create an infrastructure and technologies that uh, do the multiple band capture of uh, energy from so vo solar vo photovoltaic cells uh, and create infrastructure around manufacturing of those cells and distribution of those cells and installation of those technologies which will help drive the cost down and make them competitive. See, part of the problem that we've got is that the government has taken a very short-sighted view of trying to solve a problem that's been, what, 100 years in the making okay, overnight with a two-year policy or a one-year policy. Well, you know, it doesn't work. So, you know, we need these longer-term policies, and that's the things that we need to be advocating in Washington so that you get the development, you drive these costs down. But uh, the fact is that on a global basis, you know, maybe that statement is right. I think you need to consider what maybe T-Bone's self-interest is in a statement like that. But, um, but uh, you know... There are instances where it is absolutely false that right now solar represents a more economic option and, uh, and it should be deployed, or wind represents a more economic option, it should be deployed. So, and I think, you know, that's, that's why we're all here with that interest. We have an uh, interest in doing the right thing. You know, my philosophy in life is if you do the right thing in the right way for the right reasons, you know, you get by okay. And, uh, and uh, you know, this is the right thing, so let's do it. Thank you, Craig. Colin. Thank you. To Ghazi's point about uh, statistics, I'd like to share with you my favorite qu quote about statisticians. Uh, a statistician will tell you the average human being has one testicle and one breast. Um, it, 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 so it gets to this point about, you know, you, 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 yeah, yeah, it always takes a while to sink in. Um, but it, it gets to the point about knowing your metrics and understanding those metrics in each instance. And it gets to the other point that was raised here, um, and this is something that uh, I teach in all my strategy courses. Understand the context of the decision that's before you. Work to understand the environment in which that decision before you is being reached, whether it's political, whether it's planning, whether it's location, and you will get a far better answer. Because remember, the quality of the answer is directly correlated to the quality of the question. Uh, fin my final thought is simply this. All along in life, you hear people talk about, oh, yeah, that, that woman, that guy, they were in the right place at the right time. They are in the right place at the right time. But that's not enough. Y'all are in the right place. You're at Ecotech. It's the right time for all the reasons we've talked about on the panel. 
what makes the difference is being in the right place at the right time and then doing something about it. Y'all are here because you're doing something about it, and, and I really want to applaud you for that. You are the ones who will make the difference. Um, and with the two 16-year-olds and the 15-year-old out there, you know, I thank you because it's their world that you're going to create. Thank you so much. Um, and, and I sincerely want to thank each and every one of you for, for the time that you did, for your wise counsel to the next generation that is going to make a difference. I've told each and every one of you, when I've had the opportunity to tell you that technology is an enabler, but it's not going to do it all. Policy is an enabler. It's not going to do it all. What's going to make a difference is the integrator, as Arnold says. And you are the integrator. You're going to integrate the policy with technology, with application. You've got to have the passion to do it. You're at the right place at the right time. Go out there and do it. With that, thank you all so much. Let me pass the baton to um, Glenn and Mike. Okay. First of all, as an advisory board, as a staff, as a faculty, we really want to thank all of you students for hiring us, for trusting us to put together a curriculum and to train you to go out and change the world. We're so happy that you had a chance to meet this advisory board who is so instrumental in that, and I think this will hopefully give you confidence in the substantial program we put together. So when you have a hard class, when you've got a, a lot of homework and it's very rigorous, don't complain to me now you have their mailing addresses. They're the ones who put it together. <laughs> Uh, I also want to uh, thank the advisory board for this labor of love. They spent a year and a half under the direction of Mary Carpenter, who was right here a minute ago. Uh, but we owe them uh, a huge thanks for putting together this curriculum that has been reviewed by companies all over and who substantiate what we're doing is the right thing. So uh, with that, one final round of applause for our advisory board, and we'll let you get back to class.